So most modern TVs, they come with what is called ARC, which is Audio Return Channel, or EARC, Enhanced Audio Return Channel. And what that does is it allows you to output sound from the TV through a HDMI cable into the soundbar. So in this particular setup here, you will have a TV and this is the LG CX TV. Uh, not very new, but uh, recent enough to have the eARC port support. And when you connect the HDMI cable through to the eARC port from the TV to the Sonos ARC soundbar, you actually can get sound out from the TV to the soundbar. Anything that you play on the TV will output. Now, what if you don't have an updated TV that has the ARC support or the eARC support? Well, bad news for you is that the Sonos ARC won't actually work because the Sonos ARC, there is only one input port at the back, which is the HDMI eARC input port. And what that does is it takes sound from the HDMI track and specifically the eARC track, which contains the audio information. Now, if you have an older TV, you might actually need to upgrade your TV, but what if your TV is perfectly working fine and you don't want to update it and you just want to pass out some sound from your Apple TV or your Nvidia Shield or your PC for that matter, and you know, just pass the video to the TV and audio to the soundbar. Well, this is what we're going to be talking about today. This is the Aurea BK929. Now, there are several specs about this. I'll talk about them in just a little bit, but basically what it does is, well, okay, there are a couple of ports at the back, okay? Um, the first one is the power port, so forget about that. This is a 5 volt power supply, which Aurea packs in with the box when you get the BK929. But there are three other cables here, right? And you'll notice that all the cables are U-Green cables. I'm a big fan of U-Green HDMI cable. They make sure that you are getting maximum performance out of your system. Now, on to the Aurea BK929. Now, there are three HDMI ports. The first HDMI port, this cable here, it is actually coming up from my PC. Now, my room is in a mess, but that PC is hiding in the corner right there. But this comes out from a HDMI port on the graphics card from the... PC with a 4070 Founders Edition NVIDIA card. And this goes in to the Aurea BK929. And what happens after that is that the Aurea 929 will extract the audio signal and place it onto an output port, which is the port here, the third port here. So this cable here, it links to my soundbar, if I go to you know, fish it, yep, this is where it links to it links to my soundbar. So what the Aurea 929 does is it takes out that audio information, places it onto an eARC track that the Sonos can then recognize and play out sound. And the third is the well, the middle port. So this middle port here, it copies out the video and audio information into the screen of choice. So we have here an LG CX TV. Uh, it is a relatively modern TV, but any TV will be able to take that. I'll just do a very, very quick demo right here. So there you go, it outputs Atmos. Now, there are a couple of things that uh, may be finicky about a Windows PC. And I will tell you that if you have a connected screen, you need to go into the system and check out the sound devices that you have. Ensure that the format of the output settings that you have here is actually connected to Dolby Atmos for home theater. Now, if you don't see this option, you might actually have to go down, check out the spatial audio section and you need to have Dolby Atmos for home theater, not Dolby Atmos for headphones because that's a simulated uh, Dolby Atmos, but Dolby Atmos for home theater. Now, if you don't have it, you need to get this app, Dolby Access app from the Windows Microsoft Store. Okay, when you download it and you open it up, this is how it looks like. And you will, okay, forget about this trial. This is not the stereo headset trial that you're interested in. Skip this. Go to the product page and you should see a Dolby Atmos for headphones. That's the default page that it lands on, but go to Dolby Atmos for home theater. Once you see a check ready to use and your output device, which is a screen right here, then you are good to go. All right, so let me just close this. It actually passes the entire bit stream, the, all the audio information outboard to the screen for decoding. Now, 
to the screen yes right but what happens is that it actually goes into this Oreo bk929 device now if you look at this device there are actually no dip switches for some of you who have been dabbling with this kind of uh, devices that extracts e arc information out audio information out from your hdmi sources you will know that, that some of them are finicky with dip switches right where there are maybe four to eight different dip switches where you can set on or off uh, whether you want to take the audio identification information from the uh, hdmi that's going out to the TV or the HDMI that's going out to the soundbar, this device here is very easy to use. There's nothing of that sort, right? But there's a shortcoming, which I've mentioned earlier. The shortcoming being that the auto detection for the EDID doesn't work perfectly. So if you are linked up to a TV, a screen, let's say a monitor, that is not equipped to handle uh, media content like uh, any videos, when your PC is pulling through this guy, the BK929, to the screen, the screen reports that I don't support Dolby Atmos. So when you launch things like Netflix, it doesn't actually show up that Dolby Atmos is supported and Netflix doesn't give you that um, Dolby Atmos option, right? So when you go to Netflix, you may see that, oh, uh, Dolby Atmos is not supported and when you play something out, your Sonos S2 app will not show that it is actually playing Dolby MS. It may show up as PCM stereo or it may show up as 5.1, which is not ideal. So for my friends at Aurier who has sent me this device to make this video, I would say that you probably need to tweak the um, EDID auto settings a little bit, take video information, take video display capabilities from the screen and take the audio capabilities um, which your soundbar is capable of from the uh, soundbar output itself. So that is something to consider. And in terms of video quality, it supports up to 8K60. 8K60. And you can then also get 4K at 120 hertz. Now, prior to this, I have a PC with a Founders Edition NVIDIA 4070. It is capable of Atmos. It is capable of very, very high refresh rates. But the problem is that the TV, right, even if it's able to support 120, when you pass through one of these guys, they actually have a previous version, which is a HDA 929 uh, with one more port. But never mind, I'm not talking about that device today. That only limits to 4K60. But if you look at this screen here, and I were to go to uh, take a look at my video settings, right, I go to my display and HDR. HDR is on. Right, you can turn it off. The screen will detect it, okay? Or you can turn it on. And as you can see, the screen also detects a HDR. Well, I don't think you can see it. It's hidden in the top corner right there. But HDR is detected. Now, when you go down to the resolution, yep, this is a 4K resolution. It is supported. When you go down to advanced display, you see all the modes, all right? So the desktop mode is at 4K resolution, 120 hertz, and you will get a peak brightness of 1,500 nits. And HDR is also supported right here. So the refresh rate goes up to 120 hertz on my 4K display. I'm sorry about that. Didn't mean for you to see that. So this device being able to pass 4K 120 is not a problem. Can it pass 8K 60? Well, but I don't have an 8K screen to test that right now, but it is running. Now, this device is slightly smaller than the previous device. It is entirely made up of steel. And so there are some vents at the side of it, but otherwise that's all it does. Now there are some LED indicators right up front. There's a power, which is in red, and you have three more green LED indicators, which you can see here, right? It shows that your input is connected, your output to the TV is connected, and your soundbar is connected. Now, even if your TV is off, it actually does detect quite well. So once the cables are connected, it will detect. Now you can mount this out of sight somewhere or you can just put it you know, on top if you so desire. But do bear in mind that the LED light, especially the red one is kind of bright. So it might disturb your movie watching if you are watching in a dark environment. So you might have to face it 
somewhere else so that it doesn't shine right into your eye when you are watching something. So on this screen, I have already shown you that it works when connecting from a PC to a screen and outputting the sound to the soundbar. Can you actually take the soundbar and connect to the TV directly while still getting the input from another HDMI port from the PC into the TV? Yes, sure, you can do that. But if you don't have ARC or EARC support, then this is the way to connect it. Now, I'm going to show another example because not all of you are going to be connecting your TV to your screen. But what if I remove the PC and I will connect an output from my Apple TV. So this cable here, another Ugreen HDMI cable of course, is connected to my Apple TV. So I'm going to plug in my Apple TV and I'm going to turn it on. All right, so my Apple TV is now powering up and very soon you will be able to get something on the screen and this is from my Apple TV. So I'm in Netflix right now. So if you look at what is on the screen, Dolby Vision is supported. So the batch Dolby Vision there says that it's supported. So if I were to go down, I know for sure, um, for example, Extraction 2. So Extraction 2 has Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. The batch is displayed because Netflix actually detects, Netflix that's running off the Apple TV detects that the device that is connected to the Apple TV, which is this Oreo box, all right? It actually supports both Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. So the compatibility is 100% there. Now, if I were to go in and start playing this, it's going to be a bit loud. Just brace for that. Open up the S2 app. And there you go. The batch will come up very soon. Dolby Atmos is supported. Okay. So there we go. The Apple TV is passing everything through the HDMI connection. Now, the Apple TV actually, depending on the OS version, this is running on TV OS 18. They, if you go into the settings page and you go to video and audio, you will be able to see a page, uh, an option that says check HDMI connection. Now, even before you go there, under the formats section, you'll see that 4K Dolby Vision is actually enabled already. The option is there, right? You go down to audio format, and it says Atmos is available, it's on. So everything is detected properly. Now, what I'm here for is check HDMI connection. Now, this is going to take a while because the TV, Apple TV, will send a high bandwidth signal, high bandwidth signal to the TV to test the connection. So where is it sending the high bandwidth signal? The input port is actually into the Oreo BK929. Once it sends it here, the two output ports, one to the TV and one to the soundbar, will also be tested. Well, the thing is that it takes up to two minutes. You may see a blank screen and it will switch back when it's done. I'm just going to click on it and we will come back to it when it's done. And I will show you exactly... Oh, well, there you go. The blank screen is there. Ah, now it's checking and this is going to take a while. I'm going to hold this position for the next two minutes, but I'll skip to that in a bit. There you go. Your HDMI connection looks good. Of course, it looks good. So everything is working as per normal. Apple TV will monitor your connection and let you know if there are any problems. But well, there are no problems. So everything is good to go. Are there issues with this BK929? Well, kind of. Does it work? Yes, it works. It, and it works brilliantly well. It doesn't fall short of the specs. The good thing is that there are no dip switches, right? Everything is automatically set. There is also zero latency. So you can imagine the Apple TV coming with this device, the output goes directly to the TV as well as to the soundbar simultaneously at the same time. So there is no lip sync issue. There are no latency issues that I observe while testing this. And I've been testing this for a long, long, long time. There is no reduction in quality of audio and video. So those are the good part. Now, are there issues? Well, I did encounter once or twice, I think maybe twice, yes, twice, that there was no output from the soundbar when I was switching around the Apple TV and all that. Now, if you have it set up and if you keep it there, it shouldn't happen. But because I was switching devices, switching display screen with the monitor as well, I did encounter that. But all you have to do, troubleshooting. Now, if I were to play something right now, you'll notice that actually there is no sound coming out. And if I were to look at the Sonos app, well, actually there's no content that is playing right here. So what do we do, right? Okay, first you go into the sound settings for the LG TV, because this is connected to the LG TV. There's supposed to be some sound, 
right? You have selected Dolby Atmos for home theater. And if you scroll down, it says Atmos for home theater. So, well, it's supposed to work, but there's no sound. If you test it, nothing. So what do you do? You plug out the connection that is supposed to be going out to the Sonos Arc. So this HDMI cable here goes to the Sonos Arc. I'm going to plug it out and I'll place it back in again. And the sound comes back on. And if you check the app, it says Dolby Atmos on the Sonos S2 app. So of course, you could also just power down the whole device by just pulling out the 5 volt uh, power supply to the Oria BK929 but uh, it well actually depending on which is more accessible to you it shouldn't really matter are there any other issues yes there are some limitations one of the first limitation is precisely because of the automatic dip switching there are issues because it, it doesn't allow you to control whether it is the screen that is reporting the audio capabilities of the soundbar or the soundbar reporting it. Well, the guys at Oria may need to look into that uh, for just a little bit. My setup, it works perfectly here, but when you connect to a monitor, for example, this is a, I have a Gigabyte MU28 monitor. It is a 4K 144Hz monitor. Great panel, great screen, just that it has no arc or e arc. When I try to connect this ex exact setup, the Apple TV or the Netflix client doesn't actually report that there is an Atmos soundbar connected because it is taking that reading from the monitor, which doesn't support that. Similarly, when I connect the PC to the same setup to the MU28 monitor, it doesn't report that the device is capable of supporting Atmos. The other thing is CEC control. Now, CEC control is missing, right? So CEC control, what it does, it, it allows you to control the device from one remote. So I could be using the TV's remote to control the volume, but it doesn't actually allow that. And when you turn it off and on, it also doesn't turn off correspondingly. When you are using the control for the cursor, it also doesn't select. So the CC implementation is a bit lacking. But then again, if you have a TV that is capable of CC setting, it's most likely also going to have ARC or eARC support. And one last thing, right, is that the output from the TV, if you have apps that are running on the TV, or the TV channels that um, are playing free-to-air channels, it doesn't actually come back into your soundbar. So the audio return channel is not actually picking up to send it back to the soundbar. So this is strictly a device that will allow you to split from an input source like an Apple TV, Nvidia Shield, or your PC into video for the TV screen and audio for the soundbar. My testing reveals that it doesn't take the sound that is running from your app. So for example, if I run Netflix on my TV, and this is the built-in Netflix uh, from the TV itself, and I play something, it doesn't actually output the sound back to the soundbar through the Oreo BK929. Well, you can hear no sound, right? So I've got to switch back to my PC before I can get anything done. All right, so that is all I have. If you are interested in this device, I'm going to put the link in the description down below. The last time I spoke about a device from Oreo, I realized that a lot of you need this device because you want to get the sound or the soundtrack from your source device into the Sonos Arc, right? So if you don't have a screen that will support the Arc or ER, this is the perfect device to get and I'll put the QR code right here. If you scan it, it will bring you to the Amazon affiliate page where you can buy everything that you buy through my Amazon affiliate link. It earns me a small, and I really mean small, tiny commission. So thank you for helping me build this channel and I hope I can help bring more content like this. If there's anything that you want to know about this device, let me know. Put it in the comment section down below because I'll be inviting the OREA guys to come and monitor this video for the comments and they can help answer questions as well. So I'll see you in the next video.